we've been truly spoiled by the summertime goodies, right? The watermelon, the honeydew, the cantaloupe, the mangoes of all different kinds of varieties, bananas of all different kinds of varieties, right? That sweet, juicy, delicious fruit has really satiated our sweet tooth. And for the most part, we've had a good run. But we're going to have to learn to adapt to the new season of fall. We're going to have to learn to adapt to the winter season, right? Where we're not really going to be able to be as raw as we would be in the summer months. So I want to take some time out in this video to talk to you about meal planning, meal prep, food choice, things of this nature, the overall dietary strategy that's going to carry us through these next few months until we get over on the other side to the next summer. So our normal, typical dietary strategy, as far as the raw vegan philosophy, has been very dominant on the fruit side, and that's very easy to do during the summer months, right? Your first meal could be six to eight cups of watermelon or, you know, a whole honeydew or a whole uh, cantaloupe or, you know, let's say four mangoes or something like that. Pretty easy to do. Second meal could be you know, a banana smoothie with like four to six, for some people even eight bananas, right? A little bit of plant-based milk, some cinnamon, some nutmeg, blueberries, strawberries on top, that kind of thing. A little sunflower seed kernels added on to it. Second meal could be a grapefruit, a few tangerines, a couple cups of grapes, leafy greens, and then a warm, savory meal towards the end of the day, right? Having your sweet potato, chickpeas, and, you know, steamed greens, whether it be cabbage, broccoli, mustard greens, this kind of thing. And that would be like a full day of eating, right? But we got to make a little bit of an adjustment here, moving into the fall and the winter months. And that's when um, we start adding more breakfast porridges, for example. So for example, uh, breakfast porridges such as buckwheat or akasha, which is toasted buckwheat, which is uh, one of my favorites, right? The one I do the most is rolled oats, you know, organic rolled oats, preferably uh, from uh, a producer that doesn't use glyphosate or have the contamination of the glyphosate, right? So it's good to do your research and do your brand research to find out which ones have the least amount of glyphosate in them, right? But overnight rolled oats is one of my personal favorites, right? Eight to 10 ounces of plant-based milk, putting in some cacao, some cinnamon, pinch of nutmeg, sea salt, and then mix the rolled oats in there and leave it in the fridge overnight. Real easy to do, right? Um, so things like that, that breakfast porridge is a great addition, especially in the fall and the winter uh, months, and even more so post-workout. Midday meal in the afternoon or so, um, some of the fruits that are going to be in season are going to be things like apples, pears, uh, plums, peaches, nectarines, that kind of thing. Right. Depending on where you are, may be different, right? I'm here in the U.S. Uh, you know, we have a pretty long supply chain, right? So we got a little bit more flexibility, but it does depend state to state, right? Um, but yeah, so for me personally, it would be like around three or four apples, three or four pears, something like that. Those would be kind of food choices for me there. Um, 
And then we should still have access to things like grapes, uh, bananas, right? Things of this nature. And of course, leafy greens. And then that last meal of the day, right? The warm, savory, carb-rich meal. The butternut squash, right? Those gourds, tubers, like carrots, uh, yams, Japanese yam, yucca, things of this nature, right? Uh, those are going to be a big deal in this season. In addition to onion, garlic, and uh, cucumber, you still have things of this nature. Having your stoops and stews. Uh, did I say stoops and stews? I meant soups and stews. <laughs> Right. And then, of course, having these things well seasoned. Right. And those are broad recommendations because some of us, we can't really eat certain things. We don't react very well. So, for example, let's say for whole grains, you may do really well with quinoa, but not so much with basmati rice. Or you may do really well with quinoa and basmati rice, but not really with pearl barley. Right. Or you may not really do well with any of those things other than quinoa, but you do really good with kamut berries, right, for example. So uh, your food choices are going to be a little individualized according to uh, whatever works best with your gut and gives you the least amount of gas and bloating and things like that. But in addition to that, your uh, seasonings become very important. The, the, the vegetables, the leafy greens that you use become also very important, right? Um, because, you know, things like your cayenne pepper, your turmeric, these anti-inflammatory things may help uh, with your digestion so you don't experience any kind of funky gut issues or odors and things like that, right? So that's more individualized, right? So I'm just speaking more broadly. But I want to show you some examples of what a full day of eating looks like and kind of run through that a little bit. You know, the, the calories, carbs, fats, protein, that kind of thing, and the meal by meal breakdown strategy right quick. Okay, so basically here, this is uh, a little bit of a preview to a diet plan that I've written for somebody uh, who is a member of the tribe here, right? And so this refers to the, what I was just talking about here and the dietary strategy for fall and the winter. There's many different ways to structure a diet. This is just one. So first thing in the morning, you roll out of bed and about 20 to 30 minutes after you wake up, you have your morning juice, right? Uh, this is one of my favorite morning juices, the one large cucumber, the one large carrot, and the whole beet with the beet greens attached. Um, this is phenomenal if you've got uh, high blood pressure, if you are insulin resistant, pre-diabetic, or full-blown type 2 diabetic. This is a really good morning juice to have, right? Um, this really reduces oxidative stress, improves blood flow. So if you're dealing with things like erectile dysfunction or liver disease, things like this, this is a really good juice to have. Now this is pretty bitter. Uh, the carrot adds a little bit of sweetness to it, but if you want a little bit more than that, um, you can add uh, an apple, preferably a Granny Smith apple, which is one of the ones that I like to add. Granny Smith is a little it's a little sour, it's a little tangy. It's not that sweet, right? Uh, but that's just one of my favorites that I like to put um, in a juice. You can put a Pink Lady, or you can put uh, a Honeycrisp Apple, whatever the, whatever the case is that you feel comfortable putting. It's just, I like putting a Granny Smith. A beautiful green, crispy apple, right? And this is really good for like, you know, before your daily morning activity, whether it be your 45 minute walk or your mobility exercises or resistance training or a mix of all of those. The juice is a great way to get started. And then post-workout, right? You've worked up a sweat, you have did your physical activity and has brought your blood sugar down quite a bit. And so now you're ready for the first official meal of the day. Here's an example here, right? This is like an overnight oats meal. Uh, here with two sliced bananas. So we got eight ounces of plant-based milk. We got a cup of rolled oats measured dry. Okay. We got two tablespoons of cacao powder. We got one teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon, one tablespoon of coconut sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. 
So basically the plant-based milk, the cacao powder, the Ceylon cinnamon, the coconut sugar, and the sea salt can all be put in a blender and blended up. You put that into a container and then you add the dried rolled oats and mix that into it, right? And leave it in the fridge overnight. And what happens is this creates like this, uh, it softens up the oats and creates a nice texture uh, for, a, for a meal to have in the morning, right? And then of course you let that soak in. The oats, you know, they soak up the plant-based milk, everything like that. And then you just slice up some, some bananas and put that on top, right? For example, with this meal. Um, and this is a very filling meal. And the cacao powder, rich in magnesium, uh, very good for blood sugar management, all right? Uh, also a good source of copper, iron, things of this nature, right? So copper, I'm a big fan of, uh, of the cacao powder <clears throat> uh, for, the, for, for that breakfast uh, meal. And then uh, the cinnamon, cinnamon also is anti-inflammatory, right? Which helps to reduce the oxidative stress. It tastes good. And this is one of the staples of a diet plan that I make for somebody who would have high blood pressure or is a type 2 diabetic or dealing with some real insulin resistance issues. Uh, the cinnamon has been clinically proven to, to uh, help to reverse insulin resistance, right? So this is a big deal here um, to add into that first meal, especially a very carb rich meal, right? It helps to, um, you know, curb and control uh, any blood sugar spikes you normally would have, right? Um, then, of course, the sea salt is also brings some extra mineral content to the meal, enhances the flavor of the food, and then the bananas, where you get additional vitamin C and potassium and B vitamins and magnesium and things like this. This is actually a very magnesium-rich meal, all right? Uh, so this is, this is a solid, energy-rich meal um, that really goes a long way towards reversing chronic illness, helps to, to burn body fat and all of that kind of stuff, right? Uh, so the nutrient profile of a meal like this is real solid. Meal number two, right? This is a lighter meal after having something that's heavier, right? Uh, and that's just simply two pears cut up with two cups of red grapes. You can do green grapes or black grapes if you want also. Um, I'm just more partial to red grapes. That's more so uh, my thing that I like to go for there. And this is a real abundance of water and vitamin C and B vitamins, copper, iron, things of that nature. And then, of course, all of these antioxidants and things like that that help to mobilize fat and, you know, stuff like that. There's, there's a whole lot of benefits to something like this. I mean, anti-cancer, improving thyroid function, reversing fatty liver, etc. I mean, you name it, right? So this is a good solid uh, second meal. And it'll really jog your appetite for the third meal towards the end of the day. And this is a good meal to have like around four or five o'clock in the evening or something. Like that. So you've got your one cup of red lentils measured dry. You got your two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one teaspoon of curry powder. Okay. Uh, one to two pinches of cayenne pepper, a quarter teaspoon of turmeric. Um, one fourth to a half a teaspoon uh, of sea salt and then four cups of chopped bok choy. So this basically is like a red lentil soup, a curry red lentil soup pretty much. Now you season it to taste. You may want to add more curry powder, right? You may want to add more cayenne pepper, right? So you season it to taste. So with this in particular, what I would do is boil the red lentils, throw it in a blender, and then add whatever, if I wanted to add, let's say, uh, a little bit of coconut milk to it, if I wanted to make coconut curry red lentil, add curry, season to taste, sea salt, all that kind of stuff to it. You can add some cumin, that kind of thing to it, right? Um, and even add some diced onions to it and everything like that, however you want to season it. And blend it up, or you can even add chili powder, and you blend it up till you get the consistency that you want. Um, and then put it back in the pot and then you can add your greens like this uh, this chopped bok choy here Turn it on to a low heat and let the greens just cook for a little bit in the soup Right uh, Just to soften up the greens too much. I don't like to cook my greens too much I still like them to be a bit firm and crunchy 
but just a little, just to soften them up, just soften up the cell wall a little bit, um, just to make uh, the greens more easily digestible. So that's like a way that I would go about it. And that's really simple to do. I mean, this recipe, you can make this in like five minutes. It's really easy. And so the full total here is 2,121 calories, right? Or 2,121, however you want to say it. 401 grams of carbs. We're not playing around with the carbohydrates here, okay? Um, fat is 26 grams. That's roughly, if I remember correctly, that's in between 10 and 12% uh, dietary fat, right? So out of the whole pie of the macros, the fat makes up about 10 to 12%. Uh, protein, 94 grams, and that makes up from this, if I remember correctly, that's going to be around what? 14% somewhere around there, 16%. This is actually a pretty high protein meal plan here. I usually try to get carbohydrates to be uh, in between like, let's say 70 and 55% of the macros. It usually falls like around a 65 or so. Protein is usually in between 12 and 16% of the macros, right? So I kind of have like these ballpark numbers that I shoot for um, when creating a diet plan. And um, as long as I'm picking from a select, uh, you know, group of food choices, this is usually what I end up with here. Um, I don't go crazy trying to reduce the dietary fat as much as possible, right? But carbohydrates are going to be the dominant source of energy. Um, for this particular type of strategy. So if you are insulin resistant, uh, you, are, you have high blood pressure, this kind of thing, this can be a very good diet plan or dietary strategy for you uh, to improve your glucose metabolism, raise your energy levels, get better sleep quality and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and then of course, having an eating window where you're not eating until like, you know, eight, nine o'clock or 10, 12 o'clock at night, right? So, you know, you're done eating around like four or five o'clock or so, you go, you're in bed by let's say nine or 10 o'clock. And so you have like this, a bit of an extended fasting window. So basically you're loading up and fueling up and optimizing your nutrition in the first half of the day. And then the second half of the day where you get to bed for that eight hours or slow, you, or eight hours or so, you're in a fasted state and that's when your fat metabolism can really start kicking in and that's where the fat, um, the, the fat loss happens or the fat release happens, right? The primary driver of weight loss or when the most fat loss happens is actually at rest. This is why sleep quality is so important. So fueling up, stress reduction, things like this are key to really improving uh, your well-being. And so this is a great fall in winter strategy to deploy.